Check out Paddy Power's new and exclusive Cash Card Plus. Available to use online, at ATMs or even down the local. Paddy Power, you beauty. Hello and welcome to this Monday postcast. I'm Maddie Plow and on the sofa today I've got a very chilled out looking Lee Motter's head. Bank holiday Monday, <laughs> why not? Uh, we've got Brenda Duke and Paul Binfield on the line as well from Paddy Power. Um, it's been an exceptional week at York. We've absolutely loved it. The highs, the lows, the drama. You've been there, have I you, I have. Lee? I was there Which first days? three days. First three. Yeah, well, and Tuesday as well. I walked the course and got my shoes wet. Were you not well, told like Luke Morris? Did you hear about this where no. he got told by an official what, to get off the track when he was walking it before the e-board? So I was there on Tuesday, so there was not really anybody there apart from the staff. So ah, well, yeah. I was like, and then I actually ran a lap in the evening. Really? I did. What, what could you tell us about, about York as a, as a track running it? <laughs> Well, actually, it was more running the, the, the road on the inside. Because it, <laughs> if, you, if you're running the track, they shout at you to get off. Because in the old days, there used to be um, a real bias towards the far rail because it was a jogger's strip. All right. And guys like Willie Carson, unless they pick it, worked out that it was quicker because all these joggers had pounded the... That was... <laughs> they pounded the, the, the strip. Um, and therefore, they don't like it these days to run on the race course. So I was oh, a good really? boy and I kept on the inside. <laughs> Nicely done. Um, hello, Brendan. It's good to have you back on the postcast. Thank how you, Maddie. Did, how did you find York? Oh, I found it uh, fairly thrilling. I mean, um, I, 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 I didn't have a bet in either the Nunthorpe or the staying race. There were, there, there were a couple of thrilling finishes there. Now, they're complete violations for fav punters bobbed mm. on the wire. But um, yeah, I, I, I thought it was just a, a very exciting meeting and um, the, the Judmont was a, was a hell of a race. It looked a hell of a race beforehand and uh, it looks a hell of a race afterwards. So, so that's always nice. Yeah, Ben, it's good to have you as well. We'll get through uh, some of the horses that have moved in the market after York and, and all sorts like that. How, how was York for, for you? <laughs> Absolutely brilliant, um, Maddie. One of the race meetings of the year that we all look forward to the day before. You're, you're, you're just looking forward to getting there and it's... It's such a great meeting because the town is practically on the course. So as soon as the marvellous racing is finished, we can get into town and, and enjoy a couple of Coca-Colas. <laughs> We're all talking about how great how great the racing is. Ben is just more interested in what happens afterwards. It's a shame, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right. We're going to talk about what happened at York. Um, first off, we've got to mention Enable. It seems like ages ago yeah. that she absolutely romped away uh, with Yorkshire Oaks. I love how Frankie just dictated that race. Mm. There was no messing about, no funny mm. business as can happen. Um, and she's just exceptional. And we've got a chucking cracksman there as well who put up a... I thought a similarly relentless performance. Yep. They're both very strong stayers, aren't they? Um, how do we think they get on in the arc, presuming that's the way they're going to go? Binners, how do they bet? Enable's got to be pretty strong now, hasn't she? Yeah, Enable is now an even money favourite. Maddie was five to four before she hosed up in the Yorkshire Oaks. Cracksman, also brilliant on the Naves Mars, seven to one. Then we go eight to one, Satono Diamond, ten to one, Ulysses. 12 to 1 Highland Real, Bramato, Zarak, and Winter, and it's 16 bar. Okay, so Lee, if we start with you, yep. Enable or Cracksman, take your pick. How did you analyse their performances? Um, okay, if we start with Enable, um, I thought she she did what we expected she would do, and she did it in the star we expected she, she would do. She needed to, didn't she? She did need to, yeah. I mean, she's run, she'd run, I don't know, six, seven, eight pounds below her King George form, but you'd expect to, because this wasn't as big a race as King George. Yeah. Um, she didn't have that sort of opposition. Um, I was a bit concerned going into the race, because she was quite warm in the pre-parade ring, and she got progressively warmer uh, in the final countdown, now, I spoke to a few pallet judges who none of them could remember her doing that, although John Gosden afterwards said that she has done it before. And Nathaniel it's a used to get quite Nathaniel sweaty, didn't he? Nathaniel was a real yeah. free sweater, yeah. So that, in that sense, is a family trait there. I thought it was very clever of Frankie to ride her the way he did, um, to let her bowl along, because they've learned that she can do that. And if you look at the arc market... Um, the, the race itself is almost falling to pieces. Mm. You know, there are contenders dropping away left, right and centre. I think you could have an arc this year of 10, 11, 12 runners, potentially. Not like a normal arc. Um, and the, no, the knowledge that Frankie can ride her as he rode her at York, if he has to, knowing that stamina is a strong 
strong point. And what you wouldn't want with her is a, a kick and sprint arc. I mean, she might mm. win a kick and sprint arc, yeah. but she'd be much more likely to, to dazzle in a race in which she could use her stamina. So I think they learned a lot about her that day. Um, I think it's 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 now they can put her away, give her a break, prep her back for the arc. She's very clearly the one to be. I mean, astonishing really that a horse was his odds on favourite for the arc going into the Yorkshire Oaks and mm. um, with some firm. She's a red hot favourite. And I think they, John Gosden now has a very interesting call to make in terms of does he run one or two in the race? Mm. Because if you look at the betting, Cracksman is arguably now the, the biggest danger to yeah. enable in the arc. Yep. Uh, and yet he might not run. Interesting that John's now saying that the pre Niel is an option for the horse. You'd surely think if they're running the horse in the pre Niel, it has to be with a view to running yeah, in the you arc don't, as well. Yeah, you don't go to win the pre Niel to win no. the pre Niel, do you? Of course you don't. No. no. Absolutely not. No, the pre Niel is no one's long-term target. No. So it would have to be with a view to running in, in the in the arc. Um, and if he runs in the arc, you'd almost think he'd have to be ridden as Enable was ridden at York, because he's not a horse with instant acceleration. No. Um, he hits flat spots. You could argue that Shanti might not be an ideal no, race course for him. No, I think they said him. it might be a little bit sharp for him, Frankie said, yeah. after, after York. But equally, I'd argue that if you're going to run in an arc for Cracksman, Shanti this year would be a more natural track for him than Longchamp next year. Perhaps, Where they yeah. tend to go steady and then quicken off the false straight. So... I, I, you know, I'd be disappointed if Cracksman wasn't in the arc because there aren't that many serious contenders you can see to enable at this stage, and he looks one of them. Mm. And again, we want these big performers to, you know, I yeah. know they're saying he's going to stay in training at four, but it's a long time, these and they've at, acknowledged that as well. It is a long time. But look at Almanzor. You know, if he'd, he'd had a quiet autumn last year, bearing what's happened to him now, he'd, he'd have retired without all these great achievements. Um, yeah. So I, I I think they'll be tempted to go for it. Okay, that was that was a great um, discussion there. But we're gonna, we're going to get Brendan involved a little bit. Was me and Leo just be Sorry. chatting away for hours? When here. I get going, I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan, what did you make of Enable and and Cracksman? Um, well, um, they they were both very good. Uh, I mean, uh, Enable okay, only beaten Karen F five lengths. But I think, in fairness, Queen's Trust would have been second if if she hadn't been ridden to win the race. So, I mean, she's it's another Group One. She's won by five lengths. She was idling away in front, wasn't she? And all the rest of it. They said. Um, I'm never sure about that. I I understand that she flicks her ears and what have you. But you're getting in to see the stars territory here when you talk about horses running these massive figures, and they're only doing enough I, yeah. I personally don't buy it but it, it it's possible i mean it's possible she she was flicking her ears so it's it's entirely possible but um anyway she, she she's very good but we you, as you said we just want to see cracksman run um and i think it's very interesting that it now looks like the trainer is having to convince the owner they've really uh, they've done a bit of a u-turn haven't they i mean after a performance like he produced you can't you, surely you can't just put them away well i mean they, they the owner in fairness does seem a very patient man he's, he's in the game a long time and he's maybe looking at ulysses the way they looked after him as a three-year-old but i mean ulysses still took a chance at the breeders cup turf he's only had four runs and he's improving so fast i mean he should have won the Irish Derby, but it was kind of his own fault because, as Lee says, he hits flat spots. Now, Capri had a trip that Timothy Leary could only dream of. I mean, it was just the perfect race for him. I don't know who him. that is. Oh, right. Okay. Well, it's, 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 it's just a, it's, it's an LSD reference. Uh, we can probably cut that one out. But anyway, he, he, did have a, he, he did have a great trip, Capri. Craftsman was a bit unlucky. But I thought it was noticeable how his flat spot in York, there was only, it was only one of them, and it was only for a few strides, and then he just went whoosh. So he's obviously grown up a lot between the Curra and York, and you would imagine he can improve again between this and the, uh, the Ark. Mm. And I mean, for, for, for bad each way punters, if this, if this horse uh, turns up in the Ark, he just can't be out of the frame, can he? I mean, I respect the Japanese horse. Bramato was a little, uh, there was a funny race in Deauville. I wouldn't give up on him. But Cracksman's clear second best. And for, for, from a, a, a punting and a purist point of view, I'd like to see him turn up. Interesting as well. You know, Brendan made that point about Ulysses and that comparison with how wonderfully patient Stout was with mm. Ulysses. And it did reap dividends. Mm. But if you look at the two horses at this point in their careers, Ulysses was beaten in the Winter Hill Stakes. 
mm. on yes, Saturday last yes. night. So, yeah. so you wouldn't have thought Ulysses was an art candidate. Yeah. And Stout took him to America because he knew the horse would learn a lot and about going around And I think the owners are Sancho very later. keen to go again. So that yeah. initial experience is going to stand him in really good stead. Isn't Absolutely. It? So I think, you know, at this stage of their careers, Cracksman what is looking like an art candidate. Yeah. Mm. Ulysses, you wouldn't have said off a Winter Hill Stakes defeat, there's an art winner in waiting. So yeah. I, I think it's so much harder for the Cracksman camp to uh, be dissuaded against going for that. It looks much more an enticing prospect mm. than he would have done for Ulysses. OK, well, we're going to move on shortly, but I just wanted to mention after uh, Eminence win, he ran quite a nice trial, albeit probably wasn't that much of a strong race on the same day that Almanzor yeah. and Bramato flopped. Um, and also, I, I had to do the jury after that. And I said, well, the only piece that we're left to see is this Japanese horse, Satono mm. Diamond. Mm. Now, I think it could be really interesting if he puts in a massive performance and throws his hat into the ring. That's perhaps what we need, some more international flavour. I'd love the, the Japanese to win it. I mean, mm. they've tried so hard and it would just be fantastic. Um, Eminent, I believe you've spoken... Have you spoken to Martin Mead? I always have a little chinwag with Martin <laughs> Mead about... You know what I'm like when I get going. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, no, so so Martin's um, current thinking... Um, See, I knew you. I knew you'd, I knew oh, you'd been on the phone. I don't this worry. is good. Um, Martin's current thinking is that the arc is probably now, by the sounds of it, the objective. I don't think he wants to say right now, eminent runs in the arc. Mm -hmm. I think the, the way he's phrasing it is that it's very much on the cards. Um, and he's talking along the lines of if they do decide that the arc is the race, which I think they will decide, he'll go straight there. So he won't okay. go to Leopardstown first, won't go for the Prignel first. He'd go straight there. And again, it's a similar thing to, to um, Cracksman, isn't it? The way the race is, is, is shaping, with very, very few horses. I think what, only one horse at the minute um, can be back to only single-figure prices. Everything else is a double-figure price or mm. above, depending on where you shop. Um, so he's travelled He travelled well around Deauville. The fact he travels, you know, he got to France fine. Um, he'll improve over a mile and a half. He's easy to ride from the front if need be. Again, it'd be very hard to persuade him not to run in the race. Mm. We want to see them. Listen to us. <laughs> I hope they're listening to the postcards. We want to see them. Um, we'll just go for a quick break now and then we'll get back to reflecting on York. Paddy Power are offering money back as a free bet if the horse you back finishes second, third or fourth to the SP favourite in two races today and every day this month. Max £25 per race. TNC supply 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. OK, before we get back to York and all the two-year-olds that caught our eye, it's competition time. So just a quick reminder, here's your chance to win a free £25 or €25 Euro bet with our sponsors, Paddy Power. All you have to do is answer the following question and tweet your answer using the hashtag postcast. The question is, who is favourite for Paddy Power with... Who is favourite for Paddy Power? Who is favourite for the arc with Paddy Power? Remember to tweet your answer using the hashtag postcast and the winner will be revealed on Friday's postcast. Right, OK. Now, Brendan, we want to get some more out of you. What did you make of, of this weekend of York? We had the gym crack, the lather. Um, surely we've got to mention Saxon Warrior, um, who made his debut uh, yesterday. I don't know if you saw that. What, what did you make of the two-year-old performances in general? Yes, in general. Well, I mean, the old uh, uh, two-year-old debut winner for Aidan O'Brien Claxon goes off, of course, so that hasn't happened too often this season. Um, he's, a, he's an interesting horse, Saxon Warrior. Uh, fooled me in the parade ring, I have to say. He's very deep girth. He's has a big backside in him as well. Not, not, not unlike um, Churchill. He's not the same as Churchill, but he's a, he's a pretty imposing horse, very strong. And uh, serious performance. I'm not sure with the favourite disappointing how strong a maiden it was, but the way his horses have been improved and what have you. And very interesting for... Um, the uh, pedigree gurus that uh, deep impact you've mm. had September now you have him it's interesting I'd say they, you, you might see them raid the Japanese sales a little bit more this autumn it, it, it's a, it's a very interesting angle going forward and he he, he could have a, a bright future I think they're talking about the bears for firm so we yes. might see him there yeah, yeah I noticed that um I mean he's one of these like you say in the brown horses when they win first time out mm. they don't tend to do that very often so you have to no. sit up and take uh -huh. note um yeah. Finners, how, how did um, the markets react to these two-year-old winners have we got any prices for Saxon Warrior for the Guineas or anything like that? Well, we put him into the Derby, Maddie, at 20 to 1. Um, Aidan was describing him as a serious horse afterwards. Talk of the Beresford. And, um, you know, it's 8 to 1 in the field in that market. He's, he's third best in. 
So he, he's well up there, and we'll 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 learn more in the Beresford if Brendan's father doesn't beat him beat him <laughs> with another horse. We'll touch on that a bit more later. Um, we'll get back to York then in the Jim Crack and Sons of Marley, who I mean the juveniles this year are looking quite closely matched. But he was he was pretty good, wasn't he, Lee? Yeah, he was. Um, I, you know, going into the the Jim Crack, a race with a huge pot of money, two hundred twenty five grand. It didn't look like the sort of race that was having that had a field worthy of 225 grand. Mm. There were smart horses, but the fact they went 92 the field in a 10 runner race suggested that we didn't think there were any potential superstars in there. Um, but as it turned out, I think we had a more impressive winner than I would have thought likely. Yes. Um, Sands of Marley, um, Pani Richard Fai had been very bullish about his Jim Crack claims after the, the Nottingham Maiden win. Uh, he was ridden like a good horse by Paul Halligan. He rolled along. He won going away. And the right sort of horses were second, third and fourth. You know, the card sharp headway, uh, James Tate's horse. They, they're all, they'd all run well at group two group two level. Mm. Um, and they'd show themselves to be solid performers. The fact he could beat them so readily. It was. It was a ready it performance was, as well, it? yeah. And he looks like quite a raw beast. You know, he, the, the, he's a three-year-old, isn't he? He's, what he does this year, that horrible cliche, is a, is a bonus. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have expected to be so enthusiastic about the Jim Crack winner before I knew who the Jim Crack winner was. Yes, if indeed. Um, Binners, Sons of Marley, what, what better have we got on him? Maybe like the Commonwealth Cup or, or is he a Guineas horse, do we reckon? Well, we put him into the into the Guineas at 50 to 1, Maddie, so he hasn't had too much of an impact on that race. But, you know, um, Richard Farr, he said afterwards that he was disappointed that he got beaten first time. They thought he would win then. And, um, you know, you have to say he did the gym crack well. Yeah, and I think it's one of those where if he would have won first time out, then yeah. he probably wouldn't be 50 to 1, which is silly, really, considering yeah. what he's done now. And really, if he was trained by AP O'Brien and he won in that manner, then he wouldn't be 50 to 1. Of course, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's, a, it's a fair shout from Maddie, though, about the Commonwealth Cup. He's really speedily bred, that horse. I, I know he cleared away and was he must have won three lengths at the line. He was very yeah. good, but there would be stamina concerns. Okay, so that may be something to note. Um, maybe one that hasn't got stamina concerns is Threading, who, again, similar to Sons of Marley, sort of really established herself. She was supplemented for the lather. Um, I'm putting a really sort of impressive performance, but maybe she's gone under the radar a bit. Um, Binners, what price is she for the 1,000 guineas now? Yeah, for, much more impressed with her, really, in, in within her own sex group. And she's um, a 12-to-1 shot for, for that race with Aidan O'Brien. Clemmy heading the market at seven to one. Okay, Lee Threading. What did you reckon? I thought it was a good effort. Um, didn't think it was a great low the stakes. The Ballydore filly ran appallingly. Um, Roger Verin seemed to think that his his filly wasn't suited by racing out wide. Thought it was a good effort. I could see her winning a Chevy Park next time, partly because Aidan's best two year old fillies look much more seven furlong mile sorts for the mm -hmm. fillies mile the Marcel Boussac. Um, but I wouldn't at this stage be at all tempted by 12 to 1 for the 1,000 guineas. Apologies. OK, no need to apologise. Brendan, are you with Lee on that one? or? Yeah, it would it seem a little tight to me, but I think that was... That, uh, she only, she'd only made her debut a couple of weeks beforehand, had, hadn't she? So mm -hmm. um, the, it, it's a very impressive level of progression, but I'd, I'd want to see her go again. Yeah, 12 to 1 wouldn't wouldn't excite me. I think really we're asking Ben is to increase the price on, on the thread. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Um, right, before we move on to our York highlights, I just want to mention, has anyone else got any other... Uh, uh, eye-catching performances they saw from the juveniles because I really like the look of Dream today who was a half-brother to Albert Kerr. Um, what do, can you shed any light, Lee? What did Mark Johnson, another one for him? Uh, yes, he was saying that he'd worked three two-year-olds the previous this week this is brilliant, to yes. try and work out which was the... Conv you know, who said, I'm trying to work out who's my convivial maiden horse. <laughs> but that's what he was doing and fair play to him because... Yep. That's a 70 grand maiden. Mm. I mean, that's astonishing. 70 grand. You know, the I think the Solario stakes on Saturday, a group race, is worth 45 grand. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, this is a maiden, 70 grand. Um, and yeah, it did it really well. Completed a double the day for PJ McDonald. Um, yeah, he looks a little bit prosperous. And he's actually in the Solario stakes on Saturday. Yes. So he could end up winning later. less on Saturday in a group <laughs> race than in a maiden. <laughs> Okay, Brendan, um, anything to add from York? Anything majorly catch your eye? 
Well, I suppose that the the one that caught everyone's eye was that Hey Jonesy. He just oh, I loved him. Well, he he has withering speed, completely robbed by a track bias. He well. He, I, 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 I'd be almost definite he's the best horse in that race. Oh, I said I'm, similar. I'm with you on that one. Excellent. And you wouldn't worry if he dropped back to five furlongs, Maddie, would you? No, he's not Blistering sure. speed. Yeah. Uh, so he, he was the one to me. And I suppose we should mention Liquid Amber from the Curry yesterday. I don't really know what to make of this run. Uh, whether Ballet Shoes uh, underperformed. I think she must have. But she didn't blow out. She finished second. And if this Liquid Amber is beating her five lengths, it's just a massive step up from being second in a fairly ordinary Curra Maiden. So be, I'll watch her with interest. OK, we're going to look forward a bit more. But before we do, general York highlight overall. No one's really made much noise about Callum Rodriguez winning the Ebor. Um, exceptional young jockey. It's a race that tends to throw up sort of young budding jockeys, doesn't it, Lee? What, what did you make of him? Yeah, it, really good effort, good ride. We were saying, I, we, I was on a, on a, in, a, in a different TV studio yesterday, and we were talking about the fact that the e-ball in recent years has really become a race for apprentices mm. because it tends to now be fought out by more exposed horses who are more racing off their correct handicap mark, if yeah. you like, and therefore the, the advantage of an apprentice is really, is really appealing. So... Good Ebor again. I think just in terms of your highlights, um, I adore Ulysses. Fell in love with him after he won his main at Newbury last year. Backed him in the Derby last year, and I backed him pretty much every race he's run thereafter. Uh, he's a massive improver. I think he's getting better with every race. Love him to bits. And the Nunthorpe was sporting theatre oh. at mm. its best. Um, yeah. yeah, we didn't quite get the big two fighting it out, but we got a big two fighting it out. Um... Wonderful finish, wonderful commentary on ITV by oh, Richard yes. Hoyles. Superb. You know, Frank, Frankie punches the air, he's sure I'm not, inspired commentary. And it was just that that sense afterwards of, of, of Frankie, yeah, Frankie got it wrong, but he rode a perfect race, I thought, on Lady Aurelia. The fact that he's punched her afterwards, it's a bit embarrassing for him, but listen, mm. it's, it's, not, it's not a big we'll deal. We'll get it over it, won't we, yeah. They'll have, been ta- they'll have been taking the mickey out of him in the way room as well. It's not a big deal. He'll be able to smile about it. But so as a piece of sporting theatre, that Nunthorpe sex was superb, and it just underlined again, piece of, the point I made in the column today, the, the whole sprinting scene has had such a boost mm. in the last two years. We had a wonderful July Cup and now wonderful Nunthorpe Stakes. Great that sprinting is sexy again. Mm. And with that Commonwealth Cup as well, um, yeah. it was it was great to have... I, it was one of those races you watched and afterwards you had that real feeling of, I've yeah. seen something special. Yeah. Um, yeah. Brendan, what was your York highlight? Um, well, I'm a bit late to the Ulysses fan club. Uh, I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm jumping it's on right. these. Some back. of us aren't even in it yet. Oh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you're not in I'm it? Just, yeah, I think what he's a you? brilliant horse, but I, just, I don't know. I think struggle to warm to him because he's oh. only just come into his peak oh, now, dear. maybe. Oh. But he is well, an exceptional horse. I can't. can't yeah, no, what, what, Sorry, well, Brendan. No, no, but, but this, is, this is what I love about him, just how he's been brought along and how much he, he's improved even since Sandown. I mean, obviously it's Sandown. Like this horse gets the uh, Joe Joyce Award for this flat season. He 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 is definitely. I still don't get. I never understand your references, Brendan. Oh, sorry. sorry. Well, Joe Joyce, <laughs> Maddie is is a bare knuckle boxer known as the King of the Travellers, and I think Ulysses is entitled to that mantle this flat season. What chance was it that we would understand a bare knuckle boxing reference? <laughs> Do you realise who you're on with today? I'm looking forward there's, to there's, the. There's, the there's bake thousands of people out there, Lee. There's thousands of people out bare there. Bare knuckle boxing. Well, right, anyway, carry on. We'll well, get no, to it's, I, but but I mean I was so impressed with how he how he travelled and sand down, but just when he when he did come off the bridle, I still thought he was looking around, still learning on the job. But once he hit the front in York, it was he was just a complete professional, ran straight as a die, and I, he was he was just much the best. I, I, I think there is a chance, and it, probably based on the ground, that Barney ran slightly below himself. He probably does want quicker Tactics ground. Tactics maybe a little bit. Mm. He was caught out wide. He yeah. went very quick. Went early, and, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. I don't buy that at all. I, I have to say, I, I, I've, I've heard this argument. I, the, like the whole thing about Barney Roy going into it was you wanted to get him settled, and you wanted him to use a stride, mm. and that ride. I managed to do both of those things. He settled better than he's settled in any race, to my eye, and he was able to go and use the stride all the way up the straight. And Ulysses was just much the best. He's uh, a better horse. 
Yeah. Mm. Well, uh, he's proved it twice now, yeah. hasn't he? I mean, people said he was unlucky at Sandown, but he, he's, he's confirmed the form there. Yeah. And uh, I, I suppose the only other thing I'd mention is I don't think it was that the, the people were giving Frankie grief about the punch of the early. I think it was more the shush. Who is he shushing? <laughs> thing is, though, these days, these days, they all do that. I don't quite get it. Yeah. Bit, but you win a claim. James Doyle's done it. I think he did yeah. it on Kingman, didn't he? He did it with Barney Roy but again. You, in the, you, you win a Palace. claimer at Catrick and you're doing this shh business. <laughs> yeah. There seems to me that the, the, there's, there's the shush. There's when the jockey comes in after a race and he does that sort of pointing to the horse's ears. Mm -hmm. Or oh, there's now in cycling. If you watch cycling, they win a stage race and they do this on the, on the badge. Well, I'm, not, I'm I, not into all this gesticulation. No, well, no. I'm certainly not into it. Like, this is like Paul Nichols stuff. A horse goes off odds on and he says, we proved a lot of people wrong. I thought it was a ridiculous thing to do, the shush. So I can understand why people engage in a little schadenfreude at post-race. But we like the salute. We like the punch in the air, don't we? Yeah. Oh, I love the punch in the air. I Wouldn't like it happy? when people acknowledge the horse a lot more as well. But anyway, <laughs> we're not going to get too involved in the celebration discussion. Uh, Binners, York highlight for you. Oh, well, I thought it was great for the small man in flat racing, um, Maddie. Um, the sport's often dominated by the big yards, the big owners, and you, you've got Ian Dardine and Apprentice Callum Rodriguez winning the Ebor with Nikita, and also Marsha for the Elite Racing Club there, yeah. thousands of members. So that was really good. Um, a two-year-old, I didn't get to mention my two-year-old, I warmed the voice to the Curra Kundra Brendan Duke um, at the Curra yesterday off top weight. Great friend of mine. Um, two of us cheered him home in the betting shop at Goodwood. And I've spoken to Brendan this morning. He's come out of the race really well. And the, the target subject to approval from owner Mrs. Jackie Bolger is the Group 2 Beresford Stakes at Nace on the 24th of September, where hopefully he'll take on Saxon Warrior. Ah, see, sorry about that, Binners. We were leaving you from that one. We've got to talk about Warmer Voice, haven't we, Brendan? Because he's he's just a special little horse. Yes, uh, he's a smashing attitude. I have to say, um, at, at, at the risk of aftertiming, I was concerned about my bet after a couple of furlongs because he was quite keen early and he, he hadn't shown that trait in either of his first two runs where he'd been very relaxed and he was very relaxed pre-race, but he just got lit up in the first couple of furlongs. Uh, Manning did a good job getting him settled and it looked like there was a lane was going to close up the rail and he just held his position. It was, it was a fine ride. Um, but I think he can upgrade the performance slightly he, he he can settle better than that and he's he's got some attitude hasn't he loves the game yeah what do you think he's going to win next year then come on I think he's... He, he's been talked as a very much long-term prospect, is not he? Yeah, well, I, I mean, seven furlongs is a minimum trip for him as a two-year-old, so you could certainly see him uh, improving for a mile and ten furlongs next year. Um, he's probably going to be one of these hundred horses uh, that, that turns up in listed races and handicaps and what have you. But you never know. He could keep improving. Uh, maybe he'll win the Beresford. Uh, you know, be, he needs some improvement to win that, but you never know. I'd say your dad will be horrified, Brendan. You say he might be a hundred listed. Gr he's thinking He'd be aiming ones, higher than that. He? Yeah, sure he's aiming higher than that. Yes, well, um, I, I, I'm just trying to uh, put, a bit of, put a bit of balance on yeah. things. He's, 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 a very, he's a very optimistic man. And he yeah, does him so credit, does yeah. him credit. Related yeah. to you, an optimistic man. You're, you're talking this down. You're doing a treat. <laughs> you're trying to get all the good prices. Right, OK, we've spoke about Warm the Voice. Um, we're going to go for a quick break now, and then we're going to get Lee and his, his magic iPhone out and talk about uh, this weekend's entries and action. Paddy Power are offering money back as a free bet if the horse you back finishes second, third or fourth to the SP favourite in two races today and every day this month. Max £25 per race, TNC Supply, 18 plus, begumbleaware.org. OK, welcome back to the Monday Postcast. We're going to quickly talk about Saturday's action. Lee, how much have we got to talk about? It's a Solario oh, at Sundown. It's not great, to be fair. It's one of those quiet Saturdays. Um... Solario Stakes and the Atlanta Stakes are the highlights at Sand, but on what used to be Variety Club Day. You know, all, all the world's B and C list stars would descend on Sandown. You know, you'd see June Whitfield there, Kenny Lynch, but these days, no. Um, Solario Stakes has got Dream Today, the horse you were talking about, yes. Mark Johnson. He's been put in that race um, with Stephen Mate Ventura Knight Tangled, who won the sales race at York. He's in there. Interesting horse of John Gosden's purser. Uh, got up on the line under Ryan Moore to win a maiden at Newbury. He's in there. De Bruyne horse, Connect Arbalet. So that's the 
Uh, Solario in the Atlanta Group 3 for Phillies. Al Jazi uh, looks like the highest rated on RPRs. Not a fantastic race, but competitive. Um, there's a listed race at Chester, and there's the Beverly Bullet at Beverly. Ah, um, yes. Listed five furlongs, and you've got a few of the horses that ran in the Nunthorpe, including... Uh, oh, for Dolphini, yeah. maybe? Yeah, and what's the wash horse of David Griffiths? Oh, take cover. Take cover. Yeah, Who's in there, there we go. Well. OK. Uh, Brendan, did you have a chance to look at anything on Saturday? I, I only had a very brief look, Maddie. I, I saw that Masser was entered in this scenario, who mm -hmm. was uh, very, very, very well back to and third uh, at Ascot behind oh. September. But that, that, that looked a particularly good renewal of that race. And um, I'd be interested to see how he gets on if he runs. OK, fantastic. Quick uh, Twitter Q&A questions. George Lorraine says, did Churchill overperform or did Barney Roy underperform in that race at York? Lee, what do we reckon? I think they both probably ran their races. I think they're both very good horses. I think they're both just inferior to a, a really, really good horse in Ulysses. OK, someone wants an update on Brendan's love life. Come on, Brendan, what, what, what can you give us the inside track on that? No, oh, well, if, if if you'll indulge, if you'll indulge me, Maddie, with apologies to Elliot, my my, my dates are, uh, of late have ended not with a bang, but a kebab. So uh, I think that'll. I wonder where that was up. going for a second. <laughs> <laughs> You've always got to be careful when he's he's on the line, Brendan. Oh dear. Oh. Right. Okay. Robbie Wilders says after the sad bet death of presenting, obviously massively influential National Hunt stallion, what ramifications will there be for Coolmore if Galileo or when Galileo passes away? What on earth are they gonna do, Lee? Um. Sorry, I'm not quite. I'm not, not quite. Well, the I think they're just saying as one very very important oh, stallion left. I thought it was linking the two. No. Well, I think it's just contextualising it. So oh, presenting. I see. Um, yeah. You know, two gold cup wins in Denman and more of attrition. And obviously, Galileo is such a massive, massive uh, yeah. horse. Everything seems to revolve around him. What What are they going to do when, when he passes away? I mean, who's the next big thing, do you reckon? Well, we maybe don't know who the next big thing is, but maybe the next big thing is, is, is racing now. Maybe Churchill's the next big thing. We, we, you know, it, it, it's a... It's um, what's that word? It's um, it's an ever-evolving yeah. industry. What you can say with Coolmore is that they will have plenty of opportunity to find the next best yeah. thing because mm. they've got three or four horses every year that they could put to stud that could be yeah. the next big thing. And sometimes the next big thing isn't always the biggest thing on the race course, is it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a big fan of Camelot. Um, is there any any Coolmore stallions that you're looking at and you'll think they could take over the mantle, Brendan? Well, Camelot's really interesting because he is trying to save the Mongeau line on the flash. Yes. So they, they really need something to happen with Camelot. But I, I, I wouldn't... <clears throat> I, I, it's a very difficult business to make predictions in. But as Lee says, they're in the very... Kilmore are in the best position possible because they constantly churn out these top-class horses. They're looking at bloodlines from Japan now. They have the scat daddies. They have the war fronts. So they've, uh, they, it, it, it's a tangled web they weave. And I would imagine that the, the next big stallion, the favourite to, uh, to host them, is probably Coolmore. Mm, they've got all bases covered, haven't you they? You would think so, yeah, yeah. OK, that will do us then for this Monday postcast. It's been a very relaxed affair on this bank Ooh. holiday. Um, thank you for joining us, Binners, Lee and Brendan. Don't forget to subscribe and rate us on iTunes and join us on Friday for the weekend tipping postcast. Thank you very much. Check out Paddy Power's new and exclusive Cash Card Plus. Available to use online, at ATMs or even down the local. Paddy Power, you beauty.